going on, y'all? Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the daily. Welcome to the daily prayer and meditation. Appreciate y'all being here. Welcome to the daily prayer and meditation. It's that time. Welcome to the daily prayer and meditation. And you can see the comment I pinned there. It is what? Stop overthinking. Ooh, I'm going to go live about this later too. Because it's getting a lot of people in trouble. So we're going to pray first, meditate first. Then I'm going to lecture you on it, okay? (laughs) Let's stop all that right now. Let's just get into it. Let's dig. Let's dig. Let's dig. Let's dig. So today, I am Omaka the Light, and I am here to petition God on both of our behalf. And if you are joining me for the first time, uh, I want you to know that when we petition God here, we we don't we don't leave it to the ways we grew up in believing where God resides. We believe God resides inside. God is within us. God speaks through us. God speaks to us. God speaks from us. God speaks with us. And more importantly, God speaks as us. And we speak as God. And so I am here to bring you today uh, just a word that has been put on my heart. Because I speak as God. And I believe that this word is the word that is need to be heard today. Yes. So let's get silent or quiet or still or present or mindful in the moment. Bring your mind here. Not I know you got things going on around you. I know that. I know some of you are trying to get in where you can fit in. Sit in where you can dig in and right now I'm just saying if you can be mindful, be present with me. This word is going to sink deep into your soul. So we're petitioning God right now, right here, God. And I'm just thankful right now for those who are here joining us. I am thankful for these 11 days, these past 11 days that we've been doing and going on, continuing with these deeper into God prayer and meditation series, helping people to get deeper, deeper, deeper connected to the truth, to the word that is lying beneath the surface of it the structures that are placed upon us. And so God, I am thankful that at least for this foreseeable time that we have today, that they can get deeper and deeper and deeper into a word that dwells within the bowels and the pits of their own soul so that they can resurrect that word, so that they can resurrect that word and begin to live out that word and and, and see that in that word, in front of that word, behind that word, on the side of that word, On the other side of that word, above that word, there is no fear around that word. And so we 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 ask and petition God that the word that 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 seeks and sits deep into our bowels, deep into our souls, we ask for the word to come and resurrect. We ask for the word to resurrect within us so that we can see the word for what it is and just the word and see that around the word there is no fear around the word and so we are asking that this word resurrect within us so that we can live from this word and so right now God the, the what I'm asking for us to do is to stop overthinking oh my God to stop overthinking God yeah because the word comes up within us and we have the word that dwells in the bottom and the word sits in our pits but the word is sit there and and, and, and it starts to rot away and worms begin to eat at it and there's no more meat on the bone of that word and therefore the word begins to just become a flat line a dead word but we tend to overthink this word and so today God we're petitioning that when the word resurrect within us when the word resurrect whatever word you have right now whatever word you have resurrecting from your soul that is the word I want you to hold out in front of you like a lamp, like a like a candle. And look at it as the light that lights the path. 
there's a word that comes to me every time I talk about lighting a candle and it is the word that comes out of the Bible as it says where it says that the the the, the, your lamp is a light unto my footpath and so we must be able to resurrect the word a word and hold it out like a candle so that it becomes a light unto our footpaths because we're in the dark right now we're in the dark God we're in the dark we're in the dark and our word is the word that that we're in the dark because our word lays in the depths buried. Our word lays down deep buried. Buried beneath. Deep, deep, deep down. And so we must resurrect that word. Bring it to the light. Use it as light. But we're overthinking. We get the word and then we put fear around it. But the word in itself alone sits within your pit, sits within your stomach, sits within your gut and in your soul. It sits there with nothing around it because inside of us, we feel that word wholeheartedly. <clears throat> but something happens when we begin to resurrect the word and give it life. Does it have we, we put fear and place fear around it. So I'm asking on your behalf, God, that speak to their souls. That when they resurrect the word, they don't overthink. And a lot of you are overthinking today. A lot of you are overthinking. You're taking the word that comes from within you. You're taking the word. That sits and it feels good inside your soul. It feels good in here. It feels good here. It's the moment when you resurrect it and give it life. Do it becomes fear. It feels good here. Bury. Because you don't have to do nothing with it. But when you resurrect it, that's when it's scary. It feels good. It, feel, it feels good here until you resurrect it it becomes it gets fear because it feels good when it's buried but when you resurrect it it's scary yeah that was the poet in me coming out and I'm saying to you when you resurrect the word it's scary to see it for what it is it's scary to face it because now the word sits in front of us like a candle and we hold the word but we overthink it and we place but what about this around it and God is saying stop uh, stop see God speaking and God says stop stop just stop stop giving the word more words. The word in itself alone is just a word. And it's our overthinking, our fear based mind that adds more to the word. But the word in itself alone has power. And this is what God is saying. God is showing. God is resurrected within me. That the word in and of itself alone, standing alone, has power, infinite power. Infinite power. But the word alone is the word alone sometimes can be scary to someone because because they over, begin to overthink that word and so they need to attach more things to that because the word by itself alone it, it, it's if we overthink it and it becomes scary we don't no this just can't be it by itself can it yes it can and the word by itself alone has power and so God is saying stop giving the word more words. It don't need anything else around it. Stop building walls and structures and roofs on top of it, around it. Stop doing all of this. The word in and of itself has power. So we overthink. And I'm asking that we stop overthinking today. We stop overdoing things. We stop over we stop projecting. And 
we just begin to sit in just right now. This is the word, and that's all I need. Sometimes all you need is the word go. Sometimes the word might just be go. But we'll get the word go, and we'll say, but what about my kids? What about my mom? What about my ch- What about my friend? What What about my house? What about my bit? What about my boy? But what about all of these other things? And sometimes you get the word go. And when when the word go, add a D on to that, then you got the word God. And God is saying go. But the word go is all the words you need. But you got what about this? What about that? What about him? What about her? What about this? And sometimes you just need the word go to be resurrected within you to make a move on your own behalf. And so a lot of you hear the word just leave or just stay or just go or just do or just be. Sometimes we get a word and we don't even know how to be with that word. You get in a relationship, you overdo things. When you first get into a relationship, you you do the most when you get into a relationship. When we get into a relationship, we do the absolute most at the beginning. We're overdoing things, trying to impress our lover. Hey, baby, you want something to eat? Making me food every night. A year in, it disappears. (laughs) Because you don't got comfortable and too used to back to the way you love you. And sometimes the way we love us is a fear-based way of loving ourselves. So we hold ourselves back. We hold ourselves back because we love ourselves in a fear-based way. I don't want to get hurt, so I'm just going to... I love him, but I got to protect me. And Because instead of saying... No one can hurt me. Ooh, I'm about to say a word. I got a word today right now. I got a word. Oh, my God. Mm. 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 Bring it in. Yeah, let's sit with this. We can't even go to... Let's continue. So, sometimes... Sometimes... We love from a fear-based place. To the point where we say something like... I gotta look, I gotta protect me. In a relationship, I gotta protect me. I gotta protect me. And so you overthink in a relationship because you're loving yourself from a fear-based place. But let me tell you something, beloved. No one can hurt you from loving. No one can hurt you from loving yourself. No one can take the love from you. No one can take your love away from you. Ever. They can't do nothing. I don't care how much they project to hurt you or harm you. How much they physically abuse you. No one can physically hurt or harm you and truly take your love. So when you get into some type of relationship... You tend to overthink. So you hold back on love. But really you're holding back from the love in yourself. Holding back from loving you. And so we overthink things. And God is saying stop overthinking. You overthink too much. I got to look out for me. I got to love me in this situation. I got to love me. So I got to protect me. But if you love you, you love you. No one can take your love from you. So I'm going to give all my love in this relationship. Because even when I walk away, there is no love lost. Even when I walk away, there is no love lost. Because 
He can't take that from me. She can't take my love from me, but I'm still going to give 100% all of love in this relationship. But if I walk away from it, he doesn't have any of my love. She doesn't have any of my love that I have for myself that is still with me. Stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. No one can truly take from you. And you get a word sometimes to say, love him or love her. You get a word sometimes that God is saying, go. Meditate and you sit and you hear from the presence, the everlasting, eternal presence of God. The infinite wonder and oneness of all things. You begin to hear from that majestical power. And you take that word from that source. And you go and you belittle it. You take that word that you hear in meditation. From that, from that infinite power, from that source, from that everlasting eternal source, from, from all things that is one. You take that word from there and then you belittle it by taking the word and adding things to it when the word came from a powerful source. So when it came from a source of power, therefore it is made in the image and likeness of its source and so the word is made in the image and likeness of the source which it comes from my son is a dna genetic blueprint of me my son is a dna genetic blueprint my daughter is a dna genetic blueprint of me if you want to know the genetic code of me you can get, you can find it in my daughter. You can find it in my son. If you want to know my genetic code, my DNA blueprint, look in my son, pull from him, pull from her. And then you can tell the source from when it comes from, which it comes from. And so you get a word from the most infinite, everlasting source of power. And you take that word that you get from meditating and you add, you overthink. That's what we're saying right here. You add, you're overthinking, overthinking, overthinking by adding more and more and more. No, this can't just be, no, I just, just go, go where? Do I need to have a, why do it need to be a place in mind? This is what, this is what God is saying. Why do there need to be a place in mind? Oh, God is speaking right now today. Why do you have to have a projected idea of the destination in mind? Why must there be a place in mind? Why? Why do you need to have a place in mind when you hear the word go? Or buy? Or give? Why do there have to be a reason? When you hear the word give, you attach reasons behind it. But what are, what are you going to do with this? What am I giving it to you for? Well, let me... If, if the word in your heart is the word give, they understand it comes from a magical, most infinite, powerful, eternal source. So that word which you were given, you have to make a direct connection to the source from where it came. And say, okay, if it came from that powerful source, then this word has power. And I'm going to just take this word in and of itself, by itself, all alone. And I'm going to do what the word is asking for me. And this is where we're getting at in our prayer today. So we're going to get ready for meditation. But I need you to hear that in this prayer, that's what you need to be doing with the word. Keeping it by itself. All alone. Nothing attached. Stop overthinking. Stop thinking that you need more to go with that. Like, like you need sides. You need some sides with that. No, you don't need no sides with that. You don't need no sides with that. And you and you continuously think you need sides to go with the word. But you don't need that. And 
And so I'm telling you to take the word. Don't give it any more thought. Write the word down even. By itself. So that, therefore, every time, this is an exercise. So every time you bring up the word, every time you resurrect the word within you, and you see yourself overthinking, go back to your note and see that word there by itself so that way it can insert itself, it can plant itself, it can incision itself back into, it can cut its way back into your psyche, into your mind, your heart, your being, that this word is all the words you need by itself, all alone. And sometimes you need to just write that word down. And it could be the word that you may have to say to your mother you never said in a long time. And you can hear it. It's saying, I love you. And you don't even have a reason why you, no reason after, no explanation, no extra talk. Sometimes just look at your mom and say, I love you. away stop overthinking stop overthinking stop overthinking stop overthinking take the word use the word keep the word Sow the word so that it becomes a seed and it be planted instead of taking the word and burying the word. I've heard this quite a few times when they thought that they buried you, they actually plant, planted you. And see, sometimes we take the word and we bury it instead of planting it. going to bury the word today we're going to plant it so that it sprouts it springs it blossoms it grows it comes out from beneath the surface and it goes beyond to nourish and nourish my surrounding environment so let's begin our meditation today let's begin to meditate let's talk about this real quick let's get deeper into this Let's get deeper into this. The word has been put out. The word has been put out. The word of the day has been put out. Stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. And so today, in this visualized guided meditation, I want to help you. I want to help you. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is scary going to be scary for some of you. Oh my goodness. 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 Take this word. Take this word that you have. And I really want this meditation to be a an exercise you do afterwards so we're going to do the meditation first so take this word that you have and I want you to bury yeah I said bury I want you to bury this word in your heart and the reason why I say bury it in your heart the reason why I say bury it in your heart because this word shall no longer 
no longer leave that space. This word should not be capable of leaving that space. And so I want you to begin. See, I want to create a scenario with you. You ever be in a place where there's a lot of mirrors? A lot of mirrors. A lot of mirrors. You ever be in a place where there's a lot of mirrors? And then you look in one mirror and then you look down that mirror and then there's another mirror. And then you look down that mirror there's another mirror of you. And it's like a thousand images of you looking down the down these mirrors. And this is what I want you to see. You're standing in front of this mirror. And in that mirror, you're standing in this room full of mirrors. But you're seeing these thousands of images. And these images never ever end. And as far as you can see, they never end. They're just continuously going. These images of yourself. And so here you are standing in front of this mirror. I'm about to create a meditation with you. A deep, 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 good meditation. So I need you to be present in mind. Be mindful with me here. Go with me here. So you're standing in front of this mirror. And all of these mirrors, listen to me. All of these mirrors are reflecting and projecting images of yourself. And I want you to take that word that you had. And I want you to use it, take it, and do just like that mirror scene that you see. And take that word and bury it so deep into your heart that you see reflections of it going back further and further and further and further and further and further and further into your heart. Just see the word sowing deeply, deeply, deeply into your heart. Where as if you're standing in front of a mirror and you're seeing your reflection and then there's another mirror that reflects you again a second time and then a third time and then a fourth time and it just keeps going. So I want you to take that word and do just like that with it. Your heart is the mirror. And you take the word and you put it up toward the mirror. But you're seeing multiple reflections of that word. Sowing deep into your heart. But dig this. Look how deep your heart goes. Look how deep your heart goes. As far as you can see yourself in the reflection, this is how deep your heart goes. And you can take that word that deep. So I want you to stand in front of that mirror. Place that word up in front of that mirror. But that mirror is your heart. Place that word up in front of that mirror. What is it? And let it let it get buried so deep, so far back into your heart that you can't even reach inside and get it. Because it's out of your reach now. That word should never come out of this space. I want that word to go so deep that it is out of reach. You can't even go back in there and get it. It's gotten lost deep in your soul, in your heart. Take that word with you. Whatever that word is, take it. Hold it. Do nothing with it yet. Let it get buried. Let it go. Leave it alone. Don't even try to reach for it. Come back to me. Not not in the physical sense. Stay in the meditation. Sit down with me. I'm in the meditation with you. This is a guided meditation. Sit down with me. If you're able to sit down, sit down with me. And I'm not talking about in the physical sense. I'm talk- If you are able to sit down, do that. But I'm talking about in the meditative state of mind. Sit down with me in that place of mirrors. In that place of mirrors. Mirrors surrounding us. Mirrors are surrounding us. And I'll- oh my God, this is so good. And I want you to sense, because this truly happens. I forget the word that they call it. Oh my God, it's a word for it. But sitting in front of me, in this place, of in this room full of mirrors. The actual, this actually happens where... You sit in front of somebody inside of a room full of mirrors. That person in front of you gets lost. It's like you can't even, they're not even there anymore because the illusion from the mirrors refract them from the frame. Did you hear what I just said? It's like sticking the pencil inside of water and it's called refraction where the pencil looks broken. 
you stick a pencil inside a glass of water and it looks broken, it's, a, it's refraction. It moves them back into the mirror. So the person sitting in front of you, me, I want you to sit in front of me, sit in front of me, sit in front of me in the meditation. And as you sit in front of me, there all these mirrors are surrounding us. But I become out of reach, out of touch. The illusion of these mirrors creates a refraction of me to where you feel like I'm not in front of you anymore. This really can, this truly happens. This is not something I am actually using as a meditation, but this really does happen. The person can be lost right there in front of you because of the illusion of the mirrors refracts them, pulls them into the mirror. The illusion pulls them into the mirror that the person that was right there in front of you gets lost and you get scared and now you're alone because you're thinking there's no way out of this box. Where am I? Where are you? Why are you leaving? Why are you gone? Why are you in the mirrors? Come out of these mirrors. But no, I reach my hand out and I touch you and you're right there. And I want you to know in this meditation, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. And I be the word. I be the word. The word isn't lost. See how I made you bury it in your heart. But I be right there with you. This is God saying, I'm right there with you. I know you may think that I'm stuck in these mirrors. I know you may think that I'm in the mirror somewhere. But I'm right here in front of you. The word is right here in front of you. And I want you to hold that word out. Reach out. And put your hand on my shoulder and touch the word. Touch the word. So that you know the word hasn't gone anywhere. But sometimes the word gets in front of us and it gets scary because all of these other images around that we place, that's called overthinking. Mm. This meditation is good. Because of all of these images around the word, the word itself gets lost. Ooh, oh my God, I'm preaching in the meditation. The word itself gets lost. Because when we hold the word out in front of us, in a room full of mirrors, it creates the optical illusion that the word is lost and we place all these other images on it. That's called overthinking. We have to attach, is it you, 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 is it you? Which mirror are you in? Which mirror are you in? There's a thousands of you. Which mirror are you in? And we attach all these, these images to the word. We attach all these other images to the word. We're attaching all these other images to the word. And the word standing right in front of us gets lost. The word standing right in front of us gets lost. And so what I'm saying to you is, in this meditation, please keep your eyes focused on the eyes of the word. And you can never lose the word. Keep your eyes focused and your hand on their heart. Keep your eyes focused on the eyes of the word. And you'll never lose the word. But the moment you take your eyes off the word, the word refracts. The word begins to refract itself. It begins to pull itself back into the mirrors and you begin to lose the word that's standing in front of you. And it gets so lost in the mirrors and the images of the mirrors that you don't even know which one it is anymore. And you're attaching all these images to the word. But if you reach out, Remember where the word was? The word is buried where? In your heart. So when you reach out and touch my heart, but what I'm asking you to do is put your hand on your heart. Because that's what a word is. But if you reach out and touch my heart, you will be able to touch the word. What am I saying? Because I speak as God. So what I'm saying is when you reach out and touch God, when you reach out and touch my heart, because I speak as God, when you reach out and touch your heart. See, I create a scenario for you where I am the word and when you reach out and touch my heart because I speak as God you're really touching your heart you're touching your heart and that's where the word is buried so once you place your hand back on your heart 
we resurrect the word. The word becomes alive again. And it is not lost. It is not lost within the many images. And we overthink, we overthink, and we overthink. We overthink so much. We overthink the word so much. That we create so many images. We put thousands of mirrors up where it gets lost. If the word begins to refract itself, it begins to move back from us. It begins to move away. That's what it means to refract. It moves away. It begins to move away from us. It gets lost. And it gets lost in the many images of the mirror. And we're looking, the word is right here, but we're looking in the images of the mirror because we took our eyes off the word. We're, the word is now lost. We can no longer see the word. And we're looking in the images of the mirrors for which one it is. Are you the real one? 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 Which one is the real word? But the word is still right here in front of you. The word is still right here in front of you. The word is still in front of you. And I want you to grab on to that word. Put your hand on the shoulder or on the heart of that word. Uh, and that's me. Put your hand on my heart. Look me in my eyes. And never lose contact with the word. Never lose contact with the word. Even with the mirrors around us. Even with all the mirrors around us. I'm able to be in direct connection with the word because I'm looking directly at the word and I don't attach all these other images. The moment the word gets lost is because we took our eyes off of it. We got distracted and the word starts to look like everything else in our lives. Oh, it looks like what she's doing. Oh, no, it, it looks like what he's doing. It looked like what he's doing over there. No, it looked like what he's doing. And we lose the power of the word for ourselves. Because when we take our eyes off it, it looks like what everybody else is doing. When are you going to be the one that everybody else say it looks like what he's doing? It looks like what she's doing. When are you going to be the one where everybody looks at you and say it looks like what you're doing? And this is what I'm saying for you to do today. Take the word. Bury it in your heart. So that every time you get lost... Because you're looking at what everyone else is doing because you got distracted and the images and all the other mirrors and the word starts to look like all the other images in these mirrors. Place your hand back on your heart. Touch God. Resurrect the word in your being and go from there. And say, this is the word I will stay focused on and keep my contact with. Let us breathe. Let us rest, let us rest, let us breathe, let us breathe, let us breathe in through the nostrils and through the nasal, let the breath rise, let it, let it, let it elevate, let it elevate, let it elevate, elevate, elevate the breath, elevate the breath, elevate the breath, hold on to your word, elevate the breath, let it sit at the crown, let it sit at the crown, hold it at the crown, and I want you to stay focused, eyes focused only on the word. What is the word? Stay focused on the word. Now, before we release the word from our biosphere into the atmosphere, I want us to do one extra thing with that now. I want us to, to know that once we release it from our biosphere into our atmosphere, we create what? A hemisphere, a world, a world of that word. And so let's 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 breathe from the biosphere. Let's breathe that in, and now let's release the breath that you have already into the atmosphere. And that is my immediate environment, right? My atmosphere is my immediate environment. So we release the word into the atmosphere, but we give our intention of the word 
to the hemisphere. That's the globe. So we want we want our world, we want our world to be that of which we hold in our heart. So that not only in our atmosphere, but that means even in my travels, that means the world is already over there waiting on me. That means even if I go to Yugoslavia, the world is already over there waiting on me. That means even if I go to Uzbekistan, the world is already over there waiting on me. That means even if I go to Kabul, the world is already over there waiting on me. If I go to Africa, the world is already over there waiting on me. It doesn't matter. I'm creating a hemisphere. of my atmosphere that was all coming from the biosphere so from my biosphere we breathe let's breathe into the biosphere again let the breath rise let it elevate let it sit at the crown and I want you to slowly take the word breathe it out breathe the word out into your atmosphere so that your immediate environment becomes a direct correlation, a blueprint of your biosphere. So your atmosphere becomes your biosphere, but your hemisphere becomes your atmosphere. Oh my God. Oh my God. Mm. Your hemisphere becomes your atmosphere. Your world, your world becomes your atmosphere and your atmosphere is what's in the biosphere. Oh my. Breathe it in, release the breath. Because I want you to know that your atmosphere is already in your hemisphere. Your atmosphere that came from your biosphere, your atmosphere is already in your hemisphere. That means your the, 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 the environment you walk within because of your biosphere, the environment you walk within, your atmosphere, you've now multiplied that in size in your hemisphere. So that means the word in which we put in our atmosphere is already waiting on us in the UK. It's already waiting on us in, 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 in South America. It's already waiting on us in the in the Arctic. Wherever we go, it's already waiting on us there. It's already there. We've created a hemisphere of the word that comes from the biosphere. So we breathe in again that exercise. Breathe in the word. Hold the word and breathe it in. Let it rise. Let it elevate. Let it sit at the crown. Keep your hand on your heart, my heart. You can release the breath. I want you to feel the sensation of you releasing your, literally your biosphere into the atmosphere. I mean, see all kinds of, I want to say fluids, but see all kinds of bacteria, organ, living cell organisms leave your nostrils, leave your mouth. I want you to literally see living organisms, living cell organisms leaving your, your breath and you're breathing that word and that word is attached to every living cell organism that you breathe out into your atmosphere I want you to see that Another deep breath in. Be ready to release those living cell organisms from your mouth. Slowly parted lips. When you breathe out, you should be breathing out from your mouth. Slow, you know, slightly parted lips. 
So you breathe out from your mouth slightly part of this. You breathe in through the nostrils. Then you breathe out through the mouth. Release. Breathe in again. Every time you breathe, you want to hold it at the crown for at least 15 seconds. You want to hold that breath for at least 15 seconds at your crown chakra. you are creating the hemisphere of your atmosphere and the atmosphere of your biosphere. From the word, stop overthinking. Stop attaching things to the word. Stop trying to give it too much. Stop trying to give it too little. Stop trying to give it not enough. Give the word its power that it came in with in that alone. The scenario in the meditation with the mirrors, you don't have to get the word lost inside the mirrors if you keep focus on the word. And that's why I want you to place it in your heart so that you keep focus on the word so you know that it is not lost. It's right here. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's right here. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's right here. The word isn't gone anywhere. It's right here. Because the moment you get focused off the word, you take your focus off the word, it can get lost in the many mirrors. And you can begin to say, oh, it looks like what he's doing. There it is over there. That's the word. Over. My word is lost. I lost my word. But is it that mirror? It looks like what she's doing. Hold on. Is it that mirror? It looks like what he's doing. Is it that mirror? It looks like what she's doing over there. See your word. Once you get off track and you lose the word and you lose focus, you begin to lose your attention and you begin to lose intention on that word and it begins to look like what everybody else is doing. The mirrors, all the mirrors, it gets lost in those mirrors because you took your eyes off it, your focus off it or your heart off of it. And now you're overthinking the simple word you were given. Now you're overthinking the simple word. You don't have to overthink it. Hold on to it. Don't give it nothing else. Give it its own power. <sighs> I want to release you from the meditation if you're still in the meditation. Can I shower you today? shower you today? Can I shower you today in love? Can I shower you today in peace? Can I shower you in love? Can I shower you in grace? Can I shower you in, in, in blessings? Can I shower you in, in, in gratitude? Can I shower you in multiplication? Can I shower you in your word? Can I shower you in the double portion of your word? Can I shower you in the triple portion of your word? Can I shower you can I shower you in the in the mercy of God? Can I shower you in the forgiveness of yourself? Can I shower you in, in abundance? Can I shower you in prosperity? Can I shower you in health? Can I shower you in wealth? Can I shower you in, in, in appreciation of life? Can I shower you in life of it, in and of itself? Can I shower you in good friends and good love and good conversations? Can I shower you in good food? Can I shower you in good meals? Huh? Can I shower you in good people? Can I shower you in good, just 
coffee and tea with somebody? Can I shower you with a conversation over soup with someone? Can I shower you in these things? Can I shower you? Sometimes we just need to be showered in the simple things. Sometimes we need to be showered in the simple things. And I shower myself. I shower myself in love, in peace, in harmony, good vibrations, prosperity, health, wealth, well-being, mental um, stability, financial stability, um, um, relationships, uh, love uh, of friends, and, and, and multiplication of my gifts, multiplication of my talents, multiplication of these videos going viral and sh being shared around the world so people can get this because my, 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 my hemisphere is, a, is a, a blueprint of my atmosphere. My atmosphere is a blueprint of my biosphere. And this is what I'm doing. I'm spreading this word, word across the world so that many can get it. Can I shower myself in that? Can I shower you in that again? Can I shower myself in that? Yes. 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 I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. If you are in the great state of Louisiana, I'll be there tomorrow. And before I leave, let me make this announcement. Tomorrow is the last day for the deeper into God prayer and meditations. But don't be alarmed. I will be back with something different. It won't be this series. This is a deeper to God prayer and meditation series. I'm going to be back with a different series. It won't be prayer and meditation, though. It'll be something different. But I want you to be back here. Join me. I'm going to be on Instagram for a while doing these, sharing my light, because that's what I am. That's who I am. I'm going to be sharing my light with you. Um, as long as my light is here, uh, I will not dim it myself. As long as my light is here, I myself will not dim it. So I'm going to continue to share it, put it out there. Tomorrow, I won't be able to come on at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time because I have a flight at that time. So, I will be on at 6.30 a.m. That's for those of you who are here. I will be on at 6.30 for a last day because tomorrow is the last day, day 12. And it will be better. And this one will be good because it'll still be kind of dark outside. And I may actually go into a full-on meditation with you. Okay? For my for myself purposes as well. Alright? So 6 30 a.m. I will be back here. That's 6 30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm in Florida. So yeah, come 6 30 a.m. I will be right back here early tomorrow before I go get on my plane okay I love you I love me I love us be well and be light I shake I tone and I'm in I'm going to acknowledge you if you're here I don't want to call out names because that can be uh, for everything but I do want to say if you're in the room I see you I see you all. I see your comments. Someone said DMT. Nah, brother, I don't do DMT. DM me tonight, that's what you mean? Direct message you tonight? Direct message you tonight, maybe that's what you mean. Buenos dias, yes, buenos dias. I see all the hearts, I see the love. I see you cuz. Yes, I see the comments, I see you all. I see you all. Appreciate you all. I thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm out, y'all. Be well and be light. 6.30 tomorrow, I see you.